the Honey Badger, the first PDW you unlock in the game, and if I could be so bold to say, probably one of the best looking modelled weapons in the game as well. If you've played Battlebit Remastered during its early playtesting stages, you may have remembered this weapon to be an absolute beast. But after a couple of nerfs here and there, beast is not exactly the words I would use to describe it now. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Honey Badger PDW in Battlebit Remastered. So folks, for the uninitiated to our channel, here's how today's video is going to be laid out for you all. We're going to start off with a breakdown of the Honey Badger's stats, talking to the weapon's pros and cons that inform its overall behaviour. We'll then get into some weapon specific tips and tricks for using the Honey Badger to the best of its abilities in game. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some discussion around the attachment options and how you can best build the Honey Badger to, you know, make the most of it, if you will. Once again, a big thanks goes out to Battlebit community member Oxygen, whose tools and stat correlation has done a lot to inform form these weapon reviews as we do them, but alright, let's get straight into the Honey Badger and what it brings to the table. Starting off with the damage here, and there's actually some pretty good stuff to like. The Honey Badger comes running out of the gates with a maximum damage of 32 out to a 21 meter mark, dropping off to a measly minimum damage of 8 at the 199 meter mark. And when I say starting off strong here, I should be clear, I don't mean that in the context of damage over distance, because that's not what the Honey Badger brings to the table. No, where it does start strongly is with the opening damage value of 32. While this doesn't break the ever elusive three bullet to kill threshold that we oh so badly want, it does afford the Honey Badger some seriously nice consistency when engaging targets with normal armor. It's pretty rare to see a weapon in this four shot kill category sport this kind of consistency. You can really feel that say best case scenario lethality really come to the pass quite often. It's nice. We can also see that in the headshot department as well, the weapon is maintaining a best case scenario of three shots to kill with headshots all the way up to the heavy helmet with exo armors being the only one taking four shots comparatively. And regardless, that is a surefire improvement over the standard six bullet to kill that the Honey Badger sports against exo armors body shots. We've all got to keep in mind that despite its well, looks, it's technically classified as a PW right now, which means that it does come with a far more aggressive damage drop off over distance. It may look like an assault rifle on first glance, but don't let that fool you. This weapon is not for medium range firefighting, and as we go over some more stats, you'll see why that is the case in spades. Rate of fire wise, we obviously aren't coming close to scratching the surface of the likes of the Vector that we reviewed last week, but 800 rounds per minute, or 13.33 rounds per second, is far from a short end of the straw either, and definitely gives the Honey Badger the volume of fire to quickly deal with targets in close quarters combat, especially when thrown in tandem with those damage numbers that we discussed a second ago. Speaking of, let's talk to the time to kill for a moment here and see just how deadly the Honey Badger is. Not gonna lie folks, the firepower and the rate of fire does produce some very nice results here. With the Honey Badger rocking a 225 millisecond best case scenario time to kill against body shots, and with that time to kill being consistent across all armor classes up to the medium armor set, we have a fair bit to like here. The time to kill isn't the fastest out there, but it does beat the likes of the M4A1 and the AK-74, so there's some good stuff happening here. The Exo Armor TTK is far from ideal, stretching out to a 375 millisecond time to kill comparatively speaking, but you know, out of the gate, I feel like that's the case with every weapon that we review in the game so far, so not the end of the world. I do want to take a moment here to quickly appreciate the snappy headshot time to kill that's on display here as well. 150 milliseconds with a 225 millisecond time to kill against those rocking the exo armor. This is very clearly a weapon that is going to reward headshots and reward them well. The time to kill does tend to get harsher the further you extend out the range here, but we already knew that was going to be the case based on, you know, previous information, so more on that shortly. As always, just want to be clear in mentioning that these time to kill stats are theoretical in nature, assuming that all bullets will either hit the chest or the head area sequentially with 100% accuracy and no bullet travel time coming into account. Obviously, the further a target is from you, the less accurate you are likely to be, so also remember that when looking at these theoretical stats as well. When it comes to our muzzle velocity here, the Honey Badger sports a 440 meters per second velocity, which is actually the best in class for the PDW category by a decent margin, so engaging moving targets with it is going to feel a little bit less cumbersome by comparison to its alternatives. Moving into the handling here, and this is where we start to truly get an idea for how the Honey Badger plays in-game, and also we start to find some skeletons in the 
the closet. The weapon may sport a really attractive damage potential, but it's locked away by some pretty shoddy handling that gives the weapon this sort of high skill floor style of gameplay that may make it feel a bit awkward to use in the hands of even a fairly skilled shooter at times. Recoil wise, we have a vertical kick of 1.5 with a horizontal kick of 1.9, which isn't that far off of the recoil that is featured on the heavier hitting weapons like say the AK-15 or the SCAR for comparison's sake. Throw in the fact that the weapon is firing significantly faster than the likes of those weapons and it's gonna get pretty unruly pretty quickly. Beyond straight up CQC, the recoil is something that I'll even find difficult to control. I know I'm not the best player in the game, not by a long shot, but I like to think that I'm at least a bit above average to handle weapon recoils and this thing feels like a right handful at times. So be prepared for it. And unfortunately, things don't exactly get much in the way of better as we go down the list here. The accuracy of the Honey Badger sits in at 68.75, which is equivalent to that of most of the SMGs in the game. Effectively, this means that if you do manage to control the pretty monstrous recoil that the weapon features, you're actually gonna be welcomed by some pretty horrendous RNG regardless. So while the Honey Badger does play a very impressive damage payload, it can feel very cumbersome to actually put to use and hit your shots with. Keeping things rolling, we have a 4.13 second reload time for a magazine that is only 24 rounds in size by default. As far as magazine economy to reload time is concerned, fucking ouch. That on its own, not even factoring in the consideration of the unfavorable recoil, is something that is really going to limit the weapon's ability to prevail in those chaotic CQC environments despite its role of being a CQC orientated weapon. The shorter magazine is going to leave you reloading more often, and to constantly be stuck with that 4.13 second reload time is not ideal in anyone's mind. The mag drop reload does get things down to 3.20 seconds, which is a nice step in the right direction, but the long reload of 5.27 seconds also looms heavily over you and is also likely to be a pretty big problem simply thanks to the weapon's smaller mag size. So keep that in mind. Switching things up to the mobility side of things, we've got an ADS time of 200 milliseconds with a run speed of 1.05 times to help you close those gaps nice and fast and just schmoove your way into the effective range of the Honey Badger. So that right there is the Honey Badger folks from a numbers perspective. And I've got to be real with you all, I have a real love-hate relationship with this weapon. Now, obviously it carries some pretty solid stopping power in CQC and consistency of damage against targets rocking those heavier armor classes, there's no denying that, which is very attractive. But on the flip side, it also sports some of the most insane recoil kick and lack of magazine economy that makes the weapon feel cumbersome and even downright frustrating to use at times. So with that, I find the weapon very difficult to recommend as a main choice. It has its moments and as a flavor pick, it's good fun, but similar to the DMRs that we just covered in our last video, I feel like I could be accomplishing everything and more with either an AR or an SMG than I could be with the Honey Badger, which is a shame because as I said before, this is easily one of the best looking guns in the game aesthetically from a 3D model perspective. Seriously, Larry did an excellent job with this weapon's rework in really giving it a nice and sharp presentation. But anyway, there's no denying that it's integrated suppressor, it's small magazine size, it's long reload time, and it's high alpha damage payload makes it this sort of glass cannon style of weapon. One that is designed to really get stuck into the flanks and just be an absolute pain of the ass of the enemies that you're working with, and really methodically sort of surgically cut your way through targets as such. You need to have fallback positions ready, you need to have a good idea of how many targets you're going to face at once, and you need to be good at isolating your targets from their friends accordingly to make sure you survive. Oh, Failing to do on. all of that will see the Honey Badger become quickly overwhelmed and that's a big thing to remember. The Honey Badger is not a brawling weapon, it's more of a skirmisher. In, kill, out, rinse, repeat. And if you can get that rhythm down pat, then you'll find some success with the weapon. And abusing the weapon's superior movement is going to be a great key to making that work in the long run. Also, really understand that you are, again, locked into that CQC environment here. Funnily enough, we've just reviewed the Chris Vector in our last review and I would even argue that that thing despite its nerfs has a longer effective range than that of the honey badger right now just due to the recoil pattern. I'm not kidding here when I say that the recoil can really get away from you from 
time to time. So one of the things that goes a long way to making the honey badger really work for you is making sure that you're picking your targets out smartly. Don't engage everybody that you see out in the distance willy-nilly, potentially giving away a position. Look for flanking opportunities, look for angles, look for ways in which you can get under enemies' noses, and then let the honey badger go to work as a result of that. But okay, let's just say that you're one stubborn bastard and you feel like a challenge and you want to put the honey badger to some extra work. Let's talk attachment options here real quick. Our goal here is going to be really leaning into that guerrilla warfare glass cannon style of role, you know? You know, really shit mix some poor guy nice and fast and then make like dad getting the milk and bolt for it immediately after. So here's the build. Obviously, we're going to be starting off with a 1x reflex sight because I think if you run anything else other than that on this weapon, you're an absolute masochist. I also don't mind running a laser sight on this particular weapon either, but that is up to personal preference. Unfortunately, we can't modify the barrel slot here, which means that the recoil is going to be a bit of a problem no matter what we do here. Our grip of choice will help to reduce some of that pain, but it's not going to get quite as close as, say, having a barrel slot and a grip slot working together. Speaking of the grip, we're going to be running the B25 URK grip here. It's far from the quote-unquote best grip in regards to managing recoil outright, but the way in which we are trying to make the weapon work for its intended role, we do have to put a lot of attention to that dreaded reload speed. The B25 does do its part in reducing the overall recoil, but regardless, the end result is going to be hurt a little bit here. So get used to that recoil, this is the best it's going to get. This leads us on to the magazine slot, which I know may be a bit of a controversial take given that it does take your mag size down to a whopping 20 rounds total, hurting the magazine economy even more, but I actually recommend running the quick aim mag on this gun. It has its drawbacks, don't get me wrong, I get it, but an extra four rounds on this gun's mag and how we're going to be playing with the gun doesn't really lead to a make or break difference here in my opinion. If it were up to me, and it really is for this video at least, I think that really building on that reload speed is going to lead to an overall stronger experience with the Honey Badger in question here. And folks, with all of that said, that wraps up today's video discussing the Honey Badger PTW in Battle Bit Remastered. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to backhand the like button and let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this little weapon. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Where do you think it stands in the grand scheme of things? Please let us know down below. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all future videos that we release. And once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.